God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saint Martha, we recall the joy of which your energy gave proof when opportunity was yours to welcome Christ beneath your roof. While you prepare a festal board at which he will have honored place, your brother and your sister draw from him the food of life and grace. And when his death is drawing near, the hour he always had in view, your sister's perfume was the sign of your devotion to all glory to the Trinity, whom we implore with earnest voice to let us join you up above, where all in gratitude rejoice. Amen. The Lord summons heaven and earth to witness his judgment on his people. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes. He keeps silence no longer. Before him fire devours. Around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord summons heaven and earth to witness his judgment on his people. Come to me in your distress, and I will save you. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you, for I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky. All that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you and you shall honor me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come to me in your distress, and, and I, I will, will save you. A sacrifice of praise will give me glory. But God says to the wicked, But how can you recite my commandments? and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds, you who see a thief and go with him 
who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil, and whose tongue is plotting crime. You who sit and malign your brother, and slander your own mother's son, you do this, and should I keep silence, do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A sacrifice of praise will, will give me glory. We are always praying earnestly for you, that you may have a deep knowledge of God's will. From the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. As your fellow workers, we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you. On a day of salvation I have helped you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We avoid giving anyone offense so that our ministry may not be blamed. On the contrary, in all that we do, we strive to present ourselves as ministers of God, acting with patient endurance amid trials, difficulties, distresses, beatings, imprisonments, and riots, as men familiar with hard work, sleepless nights, and fastings, conducting ourselves with innocence, knowledge, and patience, in the Holy Spirit, in sincere love, as men with the message of truth and the power of God, wielding the weapons of righteousness with right hand and left, whether honored or dishonored, spoken of well or ill. We are called impostors, yet we are truthful, nobodies who in fact are well known, dead, yet here we are alive, punished but not put to death, sorrowful, though we are always rejoicing, poor, yet we enrich many. We seem to have nothing, yet everything is ours. Men of Corinth, we have spoken to you frankly, opening our hearts wide to you. There is no lack of room for you in us. The narrowness is in you. In fair exchange, then, I speak as a father to his children. Open wide your hearts. Do not yoke yourselves in a mismatch with unbelievers. After all, what do righteousness and lawlessness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What accord is there between Christ and Belial? What common lot between believer and unbeliever? Tell me what agreement there is between the temple of God and idols. You are the temple of the living God, just as God has said. I will dwell with them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean. I will welcome you and be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us purify ourselves from every defilement of flesh and spirit, and in the fear of God strive to fulfill our consecration perfectly. What do righteousness and iniquity have in common? Is there a common ground between the temple of God and idols? You are the temple of the living God. Are you not aware that you are God's temple and that his spirit lives within you? You are the temple of the living God. From a sermon by St. Augustine, Bishop. Our Lord's words teach us that though we labor among the many distractions of this world, we should have but one goal. For we are but travelers on a journey without as yet a fixed abode. We are on our way, not yet in our native land. We are in a state of longing, 
not yet of enjoyment. But let us continue on our way and continue without sloth or respite so that we may ultimately arrive at our destination. Martha and Mary were sisters, related not only by blood, but also by religious aspirations. They stayed close to our Lord and both served him harmoniously when he was among them. Martha welcomed him as travelers are welcomed, but in her case, the maidservant received her Lord, the invalid her savior, the creature her creator, to serve him bodily food while she was to be fed by the Spirit. For the Lord willed to put on the form of a slave and under this form to be fed by his own servants out of condescension and not out of need. For this was indeed condescension to present himself to be fed. Since he was in the flesh, he would in fact be hungry and thirsty. Thus was the Lord received as a guest who came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God, adopting those who were servants and making them his brothers, ransoming the captives and making them his co-heirs. No one of you should say, Blessed are they who have deserved to receive Christ into their homes. Do not grieve or complain that you were born in a time when you can no longer see God in the flesh. He did not, in fact, take this privilege from you. As he says, whatever you have done to the least of my brothers, you did to me. But you, Martha, if I may say so, are blessed for your good service, and for your labors you seek the reward of peace. Now you are much occupied in nourishing the body, admittedly a holy one. But when you come to the heavenly homeland, Will you find a traveler to welcome, someone hungry to feed, or thirsty to whom you may give drink, someone ill whom you could visit, or quarreling whom you could reconcile, or dead whom you could bury? No, there will be none of these tasks there. What you will find there is what Mary chose. There we shall not feed others. We ourselves shall be fed. Thus, what Mary chose in this life will be realized there in all its fullness. She was gathering fragments from that rich banquet, the Word of God. Do you wish to know what we will have there? The Lord himself tells us when he says of his servants, Amen, I say to you, he will make them recline, and passing, he will serve them. After Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, they gave a dinner in his honor at Bethany. And Martha served at table. Mary took a pound of costly perfume and anointed the feet of Jesus. And Martha served at table. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the example of your saints may spur us on to a better life, so that we who celebrate the memory of saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus may also imitate without ceasing their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.